Hello, welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at a scale application development, deployment, and management. Thanks for joining us today. Today we have uh, with us Brandon. Uh, Brandon, can you please uh, quickly tell us a bit about yourself and your, the company mm-hmm. that you're representing? Yeah, so I'm Brandon Shibley. I am uh, lead the innovation at Toradex. And uh, Toradex is a company that makes ARM-based system-on modules. And uh, so we provide uh, these modules into many different uh, markets, industrial fields, such as industrial automation, tester measurement, digital signage, uh, automotive, medical. And um, so we focus on providing those uh, solutions which are industrial grade uh, with long life cycle support. And then we also provide software support for these um, system on modules. So Linux as well as uh, Windows Embedded Compact support and uh, really focusing on providing a robust um, support for all the features of the module with our board support packages. So you, you did mention a lot of uh, you know, industries in our kind of you know, use cases. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was at the booth and I saw you know, the car dashboard was there mm-hmm. and a lot of, you know, so, so where, where will we see your modules, what kind of, you know, in, the, in real life, you know, what, where are they being used? Yeah, they do make it into some vehicles, um, not high volume mm-hmm. uh, automotive vehicles, but um, some specialty vehicles, um, like super supercars such okay. as the uh, Rimac Concept One, which is a um, world's fastest hyper electric car, okay. um, has our Apollo side uh, MX-6 module. Mm-hmm. Um, and we make it into some other specialty vehicles, um, also into more industrial equipment like um, snow plows or um, uh, we go into, like I said, industrial automation systems, so a lot of control type systems with maybe an HMI or a, um, some kind of uh, UI is very common. Uh, same thing on the medical side, mm-hmm. um, so devices which have you know, maybe a patient monitoring system, something with a graphical interface is a rather common application for our products. Okay. Uh, uh- can you tell, tell us a bit about uh, the, the platform, you know, the module itself, you know, the architecture, what, mm-hmm. what components? Yeah, so they tend, they're all ARM mm-hmm. SOCs from companies like NXP or NVIDIA. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also provide RAM and Flash on the module along with power management and other um, you know, controllers for you know, Ethernet or um, uh, transceivers for um, other interfaces you know, maybe codecs for audio or touch um, interfaces. So that's what we encapsulate on the module, all that common circuitry that's used in, um, across many different uh, applications. It doesn't need to be you know, specialized so much or reinvented. Um, so we make that sort of uh, common computing uh, platform that can be used in all these different uh, applications. And so we can make, um, you know, software that is robust and tested in all these different applications and serve all those different applications with something that is, um, you know, widely used. Why would somebody use your module instead of, you know, there's so much available out there? Yeah, there are, there are many uh, module providers. Mm-hmm. Um, so they kind of, uh, they cover a wide gamut in terms of like cost and um, feature set and things like that. So. Tordex has certain um, special values that uh, we focus on, and those are things like robustness and that long-term support Mm -hmm. that we're providing. Um, So we're making sure that we put a lot of focus on the quality, uh, on the hardware and the software, and we put a lot of, um, a lot of the engineering is is more on the software side. It's, Mm -hmm. um, uh, it dominates, um, you know, the amount of effort we put into hardware actually. So even though we're selling a hardware product, uh, lots and lots of work goes into the software, and so that's, you know, a huge um, value that Toradex brings in terms of making software that is robust. I mean, that's where most issues crop up these days, um, and so we put a lot of work into making sure that it's um, it is robust in these many different applications where, um, you know, features and interfaces are being used in a lot of different ways. So um, in ways that maybe the um, you know, other companies aren't testing their BSPs for. You you said robust. How is it robust? So you know, we use hardware components which are intended for these industrial environments. Uh, in many cases, our products are um, we provide both commercial and industrial temperature rated um, products. We also, um, like I said, put a lot of 
focus on the software. So we're, um, we, we help um, fix any issues that our customers are seeing mm -hmm. uh, using our BSPs in their application. So that, again, may mean that they're using they're doing something rather unique mm -hmm. um, that's maybe not been tested by maybe other members in the community, which are you know working with say the Linux kernel on this SOC, and so that's an area where we can provide value in terms of doing additional development and mm -hmm. fixing any uh, bugs or issues, um, doing further testing, and uh, and of course we're aggregating this over all of our customer base. So in the end, we end up with um, quite a robust product. Uh, the second part you said lifecycle uh, mm -hmm. or support. Uh, how, what do you mean by that? How long is the support and how do yeah. you? So um, we focus on trying to provide the lifecycle support for 10 plus years. And what that means is that um, you know, from the time the SOC is um, available and we build a module with it, um, we begin developing a BSP and we um, create a um, you know, the hardware, which is then, all the components of the module need to be, um, uh, you know, managed in, in the supply chain, in, in the sense that we need to um, make sure that the components remain available, that if anything goes end of life, that we find a replacement, and that we notify our customers about such changes. Um, and we ensure that we can make um, any, um, continue to provide that product for 10 years or more. Um, and that the software um, continues to remain supported uh, for the lifetime of the product. Uh, how much how much component in the uh, hardware component that you're using is open source? So the hardware components, um, it's probably not that high mm -hmm. um, in the sense that we're using SOCs from uh, SOC vendors that don't right. have open right. um, you know SOC designs. Mm -hmm. Um, and also our modules, the design of the module is not open, mm -hmm. um, but the carrier boards which we design uh, for our modules are open hardware. Okay. And so we provide those designs in Altium format on our website. So you can take our carrier board designs, the ones that we sell on our website, you can download those des designs and that's what most of our customers are doing is taking the design and adapting it to their application so they can create a custom form factor, mm -hmm. they can um, add or remove components or connectors as needed to um, cost optimize the design and you know really fit it to the package that they want their final product to be in. Right. Uh, coming back to the point of uh, life cycle, you, you, some of your products are used in medical, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, but those medical, I think equipment, they have life cycle of, I don't know, 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. I go to my dentist and his machine, I don't even know how old it is. So how does it go beyond that 10, ten years? Yeah, 10 years is the guarantee that we can get mm -hmm. on the SOC and major components mm -hmm. that are on the module. So that's, if the SOC were to go to end of life, um, you know, we have a, we're going to have a very hard time recreate, you know, creating a product that is compatible. It's um, so the SOC is very key. Uh, we have to get a guarantee that the SOC will be available for that 10 plus years. Um, but the, um, in many cases, it will remain available as long as uh, the SOC vendor can continue to sell it in you know, a reasonable volume. Mm -hmm. So you know, our first product, which is um, our Calibri PXA270 module, uh, we still sell it today. It's uh, over 15 years old, mm -hmm. and so that's um, an example of how we're, you know, despite you know focusing on 10 plus year, we're still selling products. If if it's available, you know, all the components are available, we can continue to build it. Um, then we will generally do that. And then you also continue to support it, right? I mean, if it's beyond 10 yeah. years. Then yeah. So as long as we're able to continue selling it to our customers, then we're okay. we're able to support it. But it's a matter of. Um, you know, we may no longer have guarantees right. for on um, the SOC availability. Right. You know, beyond that. Let, let's part, now talk about the second part of the equation, which is software, mm -hmm. because you're using uh, Linux, Windows, Android, and you're also using Qt or Qt. I think they say Qt mm -hmm. components. Uh, so where are you using Qt or Qt? I think they say Qt, right? Yeah, Qt or Qt. They're they're both somewhat common in the um, you know in the industry to hear, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, Qt is um, used um, as a UI framework generally, um, although it is a C++, more generally it's a C++ cross-platform um, framework. So um, 
it's used in you know it's used in many different applications. I would say it's very commonly used for the UI um, components to create UIs, um, and so th that's something that we um, we're partnered with the Cute company, and they're providing support for our products um, with their commercial um, Cute for device creation tools. So our BSPs and the tool chain for them uh, in SDK is provided with their products and, and that way you can immediately flash an image and develop software for Toradex um, system on modules. Um, and we also, because so many of our customers are using Qt, we also put quite some effort into ensuring that you know, we're helping document how it's used, um, providing support to our customers on the integration. Um, so that's a very strong partnership for us, um, working along with QT and providing support to our mutual customers. Right, and uh, what kind of engagement do you have? I mean, you talked about the engagement with the QT, uh, Qt community, but what kind of engagement do you have with the Linux kernel community as well? Yeah, so we, um, of course, Linux is a, a becoming the primary operating system that we support. It's mm -hmm. um, very popular, obviously, um, in the embedded space we have, um, you know, uh, many ARM SOCs are supported by the Linux kernel these days. Um, but, um, and some of that support is, is in mainline, the uh, upstream kernel. Mm -hmm. um, we occasionally, we upstream things as we can to the mainline kernel, but there remain, um, you know, uh, kernels which are, you know, uh, forks of the mainline right. kernel which are specialized by, or um, customized by SOC vendors. Uh, to support their SOCs, which we then continue to fork and maintain mm -hmm. uh, as downstream kernels. And um, so we do make efforts to take portions of the uh, work we do on the kernel and upstream that um, to, to the mainline kernel. Um, but we also maintain our own downstream kernels right. based on um, SOC vendor kernels. Yeah, I, I think almost everybody you know has some kind of fork. You know, nobody stays on that. Yeah, it's very difficult in the embedded ARM space um, because there's, you know, it's a sort of a. Um, it, it's not going to be an easy problem to solve. Many of the SOC vendors are doing a better job these days than they had in the past. I think some of this is coming from um, pressure put on them by you know some other companies in the industry. Um, they're doing a better job of upstreaming their um, contributions to the mainline kernel. Um, however, there's, you know, to quickly support new SOC designs, um, these companies are having to do rather rapid BSP development. And it takes time in many cases to push um, things up, main, uh, up to the uh, mainstream kernel, uh, mainline kernel. So the, you know, the issue is that many cases, um, you know, subsystems are being um, written which are, you know, in violation of certain, um, uh, you know, kernel standards and um, conventions. And these are things that will take some time to ultimately get, um, uh, you know, modified right. to meet uh, those kernel standards and be accepted upstream. Um, so I don't know that we're going to completely evade this issue in the near term, but hopefully it continues to improve with time. You also said that you work at the Innovation Lab. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things are you, your day-to-day -day life you know, involved in? Yeah, so, well, day-to-day, -day, it's, now it's I different see a lot every of day, but. <laughs> you're born in, <laughs> now you're excited. Yeah, so innovation is interesting because like we get to look at you know how the how we think the world should be in terms of IoT and mm -hmm. um, we get to really focus on like our customers and what what's going on with them and um, you know not necessarily focusing just on their immediate needs but like where where do they really want to go uh, in the future and so that's something that um, and we're putting more and more effort into so there's a lot of different issues that we look at. Um, some of it is like the pain points that customers have um, and the gaps and the capability that they see. Um, other things are kind of emerging technology. So, um, you know, to start with, um, Toradex is always focused on ease of use. Uh, and I would say that there's not a lot of that in the embedded space. You know, it's a very technical field. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, we keep trying to make it easier for customers of ours. So most of our customers are experts in a field that's not embedded computing, right? They're, they're experts in their application area. Mm -hmm. But what Toradex wants to do is make it so that when they need uh, embedded computing capability, they don't have to also become experts in embedded computing. They can focus on their application area and developing their application. And we provide a platform that uh, is relatively easy to use. Um, so we're trying to you know, find their pain points and solve those problems. Um, and so, you know, another thing is with IoT, it's really the emerging connectivity that we see even in the industrial space and areas like medical where more devices are being connected to networks and even the internet. So we really want to make sure we're addressing all the needs that come with that, which means um, improved security, um, you know, more connectivity, you know, support for different types of connectivity. Um, that we're also addressing, um, you know, updates to devices. Before, like, you had such a need for security and um, this connectivity to the internet, it was more acceptable to have a device that wasn't regularly updated. Yeah. But we're now seeing where, you know, this is an absolute need to have updates in the field to address, you know, security issues or um, other vulnerabilities. Yeah, because uh, even if your device, uh, if your device is not updated and if it's compromised, maybe your device may not do any harm. It could be a smart fridge, but it's connected to your network, so mm -hmm. they can compromise your whole network and they can be anywhere. Yeah, so and there's a whole list of different yeah, types yes. of vulnerabilities yeah, exactly. and concerns. And um, you know, previously, I would say traditionally, what we've really focused on mm -hmm. is the board support package, like that software for the core, like. Mm -hmm. Um, driver and um, um, uh, feature support of the um, uh, the components that we're providing on the module, but um, these days, um, you know, we have to look a little beyond that, mm -hmm. so that we're addressing not just um, the you know that low level support, but also the need for um, you know d delivering those updates and doing the device management, and um, so this is kind of like on the innovation side, looking at how we go beyond the core of our business and um, support people. And we did this tr um, in the past a lot through partnerships. We've had an extensive partner network uh, working with a lot of companies that can provide remote updates, a company like um, Mender.io or Resin.io are companies that can do that. Um, but we're taking a harder look to see how we can better um, provide these you know, update type solutions to our customers um, uh, with his, you know, kind of minimal amount of effort on their part. Do you work with other vendors for the update, software update mechanism, or is part, because you are more a hardware vendor, not a software vendor, so mm -hmm. how do you ensure that uh, your modules or devices which are running your modules are continuously updated? You know, what kind of mechanism do you use for updates? Yeah, so as I mentioned, there's, um, we largely provide um, support through partners mm -hmm. at the moment, but uh, that's something that we see changing, and even already, we're, we have many more software engineers than we do hardware engineers. It's, um, you know, the, the issues are so much more in the software realm these days. Um, the hardware can be supported, um, you know, relatively straightforwardly with, with a small team and, you know, just so many more of the issues as the complexity of the software grows mm -hmm. um, become, you know, so much more just um, software focused. And um, so we're, um, yeah, I see it's like as we develop more of this capability and bring it a little closer to the hardware, you know, in terms of looking at uh, security and software updates, this is something where we're going to continue to expand our um, work in the software side of things. So, so are, does that mean that you, you you will become kind of software vendor also in terms of security, or you'll still work with them? We'll continue to sell hardware, and that's the primary thing we'll continue to provide mm -hmm. um, in terms of a product. But um, the software is very much a, an integral part of the hardware. Mm -hmm. um, so we will not so much be selling software, but a full solution, which is um, hardware with a lot of software capability on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, we're, we're really a solution vendor that's um, right. you know, comprised of hardware and software. Um, but we'll continue to also cultivate our partner relationships. 
So these are companies that are providing software and hardware solutions which are um, you know, compatible with Toradex products. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, somebody who works in the innovation lab at the same time, you are a hardware vendor, but you use components from the other player, and then you're also kind of offering a lot of software. So like you have you know, your hands in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So what is the biggest challenge that you see you know, out of all those areas that you're touching upon? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so one of it is, I would say, is knowing what Toradex should be focused on. Okay. And that's, um, you know, it's, there's kind of our core competencies, mm -hmm. and then there are areas which are, um, which are interesting, but are maybe best served by partners. Mm -hmm. And then there are areas where, you know, kind of emerging needs like, like the security and uh, device management and uh, device updates, which are things which are kind of have a really tight um, relationship with the you know the computing device itself and um, the operating system and the board support package for the hardware. Um, so those are areas where we look at how we can um, you know improve the integration um, and what kind of role Toradex should play. Um, you know, security is all obviously also a very challenging aspect to that as well as just general complexity um, of the software and so we're you know as we bring on more capability obviously the complexity increases um, and so Toradex really needs to you know our, our goal is to make things easy while providing those additional functionality and um, you know uh, solution you know broaden the solution set that, that we're offering customers. And uh, okay, now let's change from uh, challenges to opportunities. You know, before we wrap this interview, is that uh, IoT is these days you know kind of everywhere. You know, this mm -hmm. is kind of we we cannot even think about a world without IoT. At the same time, more and more things are becoming software defined. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what are the new uh, opportunities that you see for a company? You know, the products are there that you think, oh, these are the areas we need to kind of go out and exploit, or you see huge potential there. Yeah, so I think a lot of it is that more traditional IoT stuff like I talked about, the security, the device management, the, um, you know, delivering updates. Um, but there's also areas that are a little more like in the um, emerging technology area. Um, you know, we're looking at things like machine vision, uh, artificial intelligence. These are some areas that we already active in. We have products that are, um, for example, the um, uh, our Apollo's TK1 module mm -hmm. based on the NVIDIA Tegra K1 is a product with CUDA cores um, for the GP, GPU type of uh, applications. Um, so it's very um, well suited to um, computer vision applications. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking at, uh, you know, the, um, like I said, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning type of um, applications. And um, this architecture is also well suited in these types of um, uh, applications as well. Right. Um, but I think in general, we're also looking, uh, you know, where we've been doing work already is in heterogeneous architectures mm -hmm. like, um, like the NVIDIA Tegra K1, but there's also, um, you know, other forms of heterogeneous architecture that we support. So things like um, microcontrollers and microprocessors on the same chip. Um, it's for, um, you know, applications in areas like um, real-time control or low-power use cases. Um, so we're continuing to, like, um, do some additional, you know, work in this area in the heterogeneous architectures. Um, and the, the SOCs that are coming out um, now and into the future are um, more and more heterogeneous in terms of mixing architecture on the chip. Right. Thank you so much you know, yeah. for talking to me today. It was really you know, nice yeah, talking to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Listen to more episodes of The New Stack Makers at thenewstack.io slash podcast. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening and see you next time.